Hey there guys, this is Obsidian Chill. Got another video for you today. This is the third video in my series of uh, the rank 200 artifact videos on test. Uh, this is going to be touching on the control artifacts. So we're looking at Amulet of Rao, Parasite Power Harness, the Omega Hedron, which you could put in the DPS as well. I'm just classifying it as a control artifact to save space in the video. Uh, the Entwined Rings of Azar and the Claw of Alkund. Uh, so these are the artifacts we're going to be looking at in this video. Uh, as per usual, in the pin comment section, I'm going to have one pin comment that skips to each section of the artifacts. You can kind of skip along. So if you're looking for the orb, it'll skip right to that section. As well as when I have all four artifact videos out in terms of the, the tank ones, the healer ones, the DPS ones, I'm going to have another comment that uh, skips to that video. Uh, so they all kind of uh, line up with each other as well. So hope you guys enjoy. Take care. Okay, to give a, a brief overview of the artifacts before we get into the actual video footage, breaking it down. Uh, if you haven't seen the previous two videos on the tanking and the healer artifacts, uh, XP at 160 is 600, basically just a tad under 680,000 XP. <clears throat> at rank 180, it's another 500,000 to 1.178. And at rank 200, is uh, to get from 160 to 200, it's 1 million XP or another 500,000 from rank 180. Now, Yes, a million XP is a lot, but that's actually not too bad considering what we thought it was going to be. We thought it was going to be double each one, so doubling 160 uh, is almost there. It's like 1.2, and then doubling 1.2, you know, we thought it was going to be somewhere in like the 3-4 million range for 200. So it, it's a lot less, or it's a lot more reasonable than we thought it was. It's still obviously a lot. Uh, all the base stats, which you can use to compare against your 160 artifacts, uh, most of them have some pretty hefty increases. Uh, around like uh, doubling the vid or doubling the dom, 3,000 extra health, stuff like that. So the, ba the base stats on them alone uh, do go up very well. Now the major change, uh, once again, if you haven't seen the previous two videos, is that uh, the catalyst, right now we'd have the catalyst for, you know, rank 20, 40, uh, 60, 80, 100, 120, 140, 160, you know, 180, obviously 200. <clears throat> That's what we don't normally have. And then three catalysts for each rank. Uh, now they're consolidating all the catalysts into three, so Denisium, Quantum Field Energy, and Paradox Energy. Uh, those are going to be the three catalysts that remain. So basically, whatever rank your artifact is, it could be 80, 100, you know, 120, it doesn't matter. It's always going to require those three types of catalysts going forward. And then everything. You don't lose the ones you have, you just you just sell them back for 10 source marks, and then buy these ones. Uh, so you, even if you have extra catalysts, you don't lose anything in the in the transfer process. Uh, so rank 180 needs 24 of them, and rank 200 needs 27. The breakthrough chances are 5 and 3% respectively. It, we're getting to the point where you have to have a seal of completion. If you're a membership, uh, that's 450 station cash. You get 500 stipend per month. Uh, so just spend that on a seal of completion. If not, spend the $5. But you're never going to get there with seals of preservation. Source marks, you'd have to waste a ton on to keep buying the catalyst if you fail the breakthrough. So, you know, 5 and 3%, it just... At, the, at that point, uh, you require a seal of completion. Uh, then we've got the rank bonuses at 180. Usually it's just like the, uh, and one of the secondary stats on the innate just goes up by percentage. <clears throat> the Gemini is actually quite helpful because it goes up uh, in each category, goes up 1%, uh, where most of these just have one category. Uh, we can kind of briefly touch on the 200 rank. So basically the Amulet of Rao, you get an extra 10% on the debuffs. They go from 40 to 50. And then the targets that the debuff hits uh, goes to 7 targets up from 4. The Parasite Power Harness goes up a little bit, 1% one, 1 extra on the power. And 1 point, uh, sorry, even less, 0.27% um, on the prec. Uh, Mechahedron just goes up 12.5% uh, to 15. It's not much of an increase there. Uh, and Twine Rings of Azar just goes up 2% to 20. The Claw the claw actually sees a nice uh, buff. Uh, basically, it adds a new effect to the Claw where uh, it is giving 5% critical chance and 5% and critical magnitude for 12 seconds. So basically, on top of buffing the groups and yourselves, uh, Might, Dom, and Resto, now you buff their crits as well. Uh, the Soul Cloak, uh, you would have seen in the healer video. Um, but the Soul Cloak, uh, same thing, everything stays the same, but they give a new rank at 200, which restores 7% of maximum supercharge after using a supercharge ability, doesn't stack with the extended supercharge mod. So the extended supercharge mod is 5%, so basically this frees up using that chest slot, now you can use like core strength or power efficiency, whatever you want to run, uh, so it helps out there, and you get another 2% on top of that. The Gemini, <clears throat> the Gemini, 
it's not so much a control artifact. If you want to use this as a control artifact to help buff the group, because basically when you stand up, when you cast a supercharge, you would grant uh, anyone 5% vit, might, and prec that stands in your circle for six seconds. <clears throat> That's all the Gemini does for a controller. Yes, you can group, you can buff the group with that. You could run like a battle troll build with like Claw and, and Gemini. That would work, but if don't if you're a pure controller don't level the gemini just for that the gemini is helpful and powerful because it helps all support roles and all, all power sets all roles uh, so it's a nice universal artifact just like the scrap of soul cloak but um, don't think of it as a controller artifact because it's, it's really not that great <laughs> there's other artifacts you can run to buff but uh, <clears throat> the gemini does work in that niche category of the battle troll build but uh, it's something that um, it depends on your play style completely like, there's no right or wrong answer to run the Gemini. It's just completely dependent on your playstyle as a controller. Uh, the other major change to the artifacts is that the currently the Tetra and the Cog, uh, these are the DPS artifacts that buff. Uh, the Tetra buffs Might to everyone, yourself and everyone in the group, and the um, Cog is precision-based. Now they've added a change to that artifact where it, it doesn't matter the rank. It, it applies to everything. So it, it, right now, even at 80, 120, 160, 200, that effect uh, that normally is doubled in DPS stands, like it'll say doubled you know, 1.8% uh, of your health, uh, doubled in DPS stance. Now it's doubled in controller stance as well. So <clears throat> for that troll build, you could run like you know Gemini, Tetra, Claw if you want, or Gemini, Tetra, um, Scrap, or you know Gemini, Claw, Scrap. Uh, you've got some options. The the thing is, it's an interesting change. It's kind of forcing trolls more to that like buff uh, like buff players or or group buffers uh, instead of actually what a controller role is in terms of providing power and uh, control effects. And really, you're not specking that much health. Like as a controller, you're not specking any health. <laughs> Uh, whatever gear you have is, is what your health is because you got to spec VIT for the claw and you got to spec Might and Power to maintain the rotation uh, so, and obviously to do the damage. So you're not specking any health at all. Where a DPS running the Tetra or the COG, um, they're going to have health spec. So they're, if, if the, the Tetra buff doesn't stack. So if there's a DPS in the group that's running a Tetra at like 120 or 160 or whatever and he gives more of a buff than you in your controller stance, then his uh, buff will be the one that stays. So yeah, you need some group coordination. If no one's going to run the Tetra, then you could run as the Troller. Uh, that's your choice. Once again, it's completely dependent on your playstyle. It's not a control artifact. Like it's going to tank your stats, not do anything for you. But if you want to buff the group and they don't really need power, then that option is available to you. So let's kind of get into the video footage here, breaking everything down. Okay, the Amulet Route at 160. That provides the. Uh, innate base stats you can see there as well as control debuffs are 40 percent stronger and hit up to four additional targets uh, just showing you the comparison what it was at 160 what we're used to on live server and then breaking down what the changes are at 200. okay so we just previously saw what the amulet row was at 160. the only change is now uh, you get 10 percent extra on the debuff which turns it to 50 and you hit an additional three targets up to seven uh, a lot of people are under the mistaken impression of what actually 50 percent stronger means uh, so basically, it's 50% of the base debuff. So since stats revamp, the base debuff on an attack and a defense one is 10%, and the healing one is 25. So it would be uh, if the base defense debuff is 10%. So if I took off the amulet right now, I'd hit for 10%. If I put the amulet on, it's 50% of 10, which would be an extra 5. So I'll hit for 15% on my defense and attack debuff, and then it'd be 50% of the 25, and that's added together as well. Uh, so what I'll, it's easiest to show this in a duel because the duel will have the combat uh, current effects log. Uh, so it's a little bit easier to see it there. So we'll do that now just so you can kind of see what it actually means when you're actually doing that debuff. Okay, so with the defense debuff applied, we go here and we need a row minus 15% defense uh, target area for 12 seconds. Uh, so this is what the 200 rank amulet, this is what actually it does. So it's a 15% debuff over 10. Okay, so this is the healing debuff. 38%. So 50% of 25 will be 12 and a half and then 12 and a half plus the 25. So you get 37 and a half. So it rounds up, but basically the healing debuff now is, is a 38% healing uh, debuff to the target for 12 seconds. And that's with the amulet of round 200. And with the attack debuff, amulet of row, minus 15% damage bonus target area 12 seconds. So that's the same thing because the defense debuff and the attack debuff have the same value, 10%. So it's 15% when you use a 200 rank of Amulet of Rao. 
So easy to see it in a duel. It, it, just because it's a duel, it applies the same in open world and PV content. It's just that obviously we don't have a current debuff list that we can take a look on boss targets and NPCs and such. So it's easier to highlight what actually the 50% stronger means in a duel. So is it going to be worth it to put an extra million XP into the Amulet of Rao? Not so much. Uh, you do get an extra percent on the power, which is nice. Debuffs being 50% stronger, being over 40%, so it was a 14% debuff on attack and defense. Now it's a 15%, so you only get a 1% extra debuff. So yes, that will matter in the long run, but at the same time, it's a million XP. Uh, seven additional targets instead of four, that's handy, but the it's mainly just for like mob, like trash mob clearing. Like there's not too many boss fights that have a whole bunch of ads. Like yeah, it's, um, Shatter Gotham Elite and uh, the other fights like that, but really it's just trash mobs that they don't necessarily have to have debuffs on them. Yes, it, of course it'll make it a little bit faster because they'll have uh, defense and attack debuffs. So it's it's helpful, but at the same time, is it worth a million investment? That's the tricky thing. That's that's more in the eyes of the beholder. So if you're purely a main troll, don't do anything else. Yes, Amid Route is very powerful for a troll uh, because that's your primary stats, but at the same time, a million XP is, is quite a bit of an investment, that's for sure. Okay, so for the Parasite Power Harness at 160, what we're used to seeing on live, hitting enemy with a controller debuff grants you and up to seven group members power equal to 9% of your vitalization and precision equal to 1.5 of your vit each time a controller debuff is used, and that stacks up to three times as long as it's a different type of debuff. Okay, so with the Parasite Power Harness, not too much changes at rank 200. Uh, besides, obviously, the base and eight stats, you get an extra 1% of the health, which isn't really big of a deal. That's at the 180 rank. Uh, the controller debuff, power equal to 10%. It was up from 9%, so an extra 1% increase. And the precision was 0 point, or 1 1.5 at 160 and 1.67 to 200. Uh, so what that kind of looks like here, we'll kind of give like a brief... Uh, intro here. So essentially the Parasite Paranus is, is just one of those artifacts that works well in synergy with what you do as a controller and it's how I built um, my rotation around it. So Parasite Power Harness each time you use a debuff uh, basically they're stacking debuffs as well. Uh, so with the Type C mod debuff efficiency so wearing six pieces of elite gear increase your critical power magnitude by 2% 15 seconds each time you use a debuff and that if debuff stacks up three times so basically with the Parasite Paranus in junction with the Soul Cloak uh, I'm using a debuff rotation continually so I have all my extra power criticals from the Type C mod and then I have the uh, extra buffs from the Parasite Paranus and the extra prec for the group as well not that uh, with the more precision debuff obviously that helps but uh, it's not the main selling point of it so it's just that I'm using all the debuffs anyway to build my supercharger regen to use my supercharges off cooldown uh, so I might as well use an artifact that complements that which is that the Parasite Paranus does does it mean that necessarily I should have this at 200 to make it better? No uh, it, it doesn't make it that much greater uh, the effect on it compared to some other control artifacts but this, this still having this at 160 is, is still very powerful as well uh, so we go into it here. They took it away. It doesn't show in the combat log anymore. So if I do like status field, it used to show actually what it did, but I guess there's that either they're too lazy or whatever. It just didn't uh, translate well. So they just said increase by 1.667% and 10% of your caster's vit. So they just did what it says it does, but it doesn't actually show you numbers. Uh, so if I go into my power pool here, uh, 52, 982, and prec is 10, 497. So if I do debuff here. Now I'm at 64, 826, and 10, 773. So that's like a 300-ish, uh, mid-300 precision increase, and that's about 2,000 power. Sorry, 52,982. Um, I was reading the wrong stat. So 52,982 to 54,854. So almost 2,000 extra power and like 300-ish prec in that range. So it just works well that you know I can keep up a debuff rotation and then have that as well. So power stacked up three times, so now it's at 58,599, and my prec is sitting at 11,325. And then you'll see it uh, drop all the way down. So it just, it's an artifact you're using three de debuffs anyway with your Type-C mod. So it's just, it's a very powerful controller artifact. It's just not necessarily very powerful at 200. 
Uh, it'd be nice if they increased it a little bit more or added an extra effect to it. But uh, it's still an art a control artifact that you need nonetheless, unless you're going for like a battle troll build, and then it's pointless. But um, getting it to 200, if you're a peer controller, yes, you can put it on the list eventually to get. But at 160, it, it still it still works perfectly fine at 160. That's that's the unfortunate thing. I would have I would have liked have having this artifact a bit more powerful, but uh, it still is an amazing control artifact itself. Okay, for the Megahedron. This one could be a control artifact, could be a healer artifact, could be a DPS artifact. I'm just choosing it to do under the controller section. Uh, so using a superpower in combat between 25% and 75% power. Uh, so basically, while you're at 25% or 75% of your power bar, your power increases your base regeneration by 12.5% for 6 seconds. And that's at 160. Okay, for the Megahedron, or Hedron, it's one of the artifacts that it can fall into as a healer, a DPS, controller... Uh, it's just basically just base power generation. It's never been that great. Um, you'd think it'd be great for like those situations where you need to really spam power, like say if you're an atomic DPS or mental DPS or a healer spamming power. It doesn't handle burst power very well. Uh, it's more like slow methodical power generation. So yes, if you're in a raid with like without a controller, then that'd be handy. But uh, even then, you control is growing claws now for the for that buff, and you still have the pot tick or you know, most content you're going to have some kind of controller, even then you're not going to use that much power itself. It, it's never been an artifact really worth it, uh, especially because the power generation, you know, it was 12% at 160, now it's 15%, so you only get an extra 3%. Everything else stays the exact same. So really, it's it's not an artifact I've ever recommended, but essentially, um, we can kind of give an example here. So I'll just go through my controller rotation. And you can kind of see where my power kind of sits before and after. So we'll just kind of dump power. And you can kind of see I'm kind of running out of power at that point. So now we'll wait till I'm full again, out of combat. And we'll put the Omega on. So that was, uh, I should have paid attention, but that was like, what, two, three rotations? Okay, so back up to full power. As you can see, I'm about to run out of power again. So yeah, the regen helps, but as you can see, I'm still really low. So yes, and I'm out of power there. So yes, I lasted longer, obviously, but you know, not that much longer. It's not like whoa, you know, I could use way more power, you know, running the Omega. No, it it, it helps, but it, it doesn't help enough to make it beneficial. Like I wish this gave like amazing regen. I could run it as like an atomic or mental DPS, because even the DPS stats are low on it. But if I could like turn myself into my own personal battery running this artifact, then that'd be great. But that's never been the case with it. It's always been a subpar artifact. Uh, so it helps a tiny bit, but something not that uh, is any useful at all. Okay, the Entwined Rings of Azar, which was the first control artifact. Using a group power heal grants you and up to seven group members health equal to 18% of your vitalization. And that's at rank 160. Okay, so you just saw what the uh, Rings of Azar was at 160. You know, it's just as useless at, at 200. This is probably the most useless artifact ever in the game. I know a few people that ranked it, but it's absolutely terrible. Uh, it was the whole, like, you know, uh, when the first came out, like the Tetra, the Cog, the Distal Refractor, Starheart, like all these artifacts that like buff your group health, it was a part of that initial run, but it's absolutely useless. It doesn't give you any power at all for a controller. Uh, it doesn't give you any like dominance to help out a controller. It gives you only 4% bit compared to uh, other artifacts that are 5%, like the Amulet's 5%, the Parasite Partner is 5, 5%, as well as giving you 3% power. Um, and four percent power in the amulet so it doesn't even give you good innate base stats uh for a controller and it just gives extra health so basically i'm sitting at uh 66 000 health now if i hit uh, defib same thing it doesn't show in the current effects it just shows as you know an extra 20 percent so it brings me up to 70 000 so i get i get an extra four thousand health Ooh. 
Uh, and yeah, that would go with the entire group, so the whole group would get that 4,000, but it's like, okay. So you, you get 4,000 extra health, but like all your shields are weaker, your pots are weaker, um, your, extra, your power pool is lower, your power regeneration is lower. Uh, it's just never being beneficial. Oh and, oh, and that's like 2 million XP for that 4,000 health. So so to get 4,000 health, you only have to do like 1.75 million XP in, in that metal. So they, yeah, that's really worth that 4,000. So i um, never being a fan of that artifact. It was useful when it came out and I fought against it. But, you know, here it is at rank 200. So it's just something that uh, you can forget about. Don't need it. If you already have it, just, you know, fortify it into an existing artifact because you won't need it anymore. Okay, so for the Claw of Alcund at 160, uh, while in control, roll your group weapon buff. The group weapon buff is basically your instant power heal move, uh, recharge, stuff like that, defibrillator, applies to you and seven group members, and in addition, grant 7% might, resto, and dominance. Uh, no longer power heals. What that means is it's not instant power anymore, you just have power over time. Uh, so increases your passive power donation from control by 20%, and after casting your group weapon buff, gain 3% gain three vitalization per group member uh, with supplement energy. Basically, each, one, each member that uh, has the control buff on them for the might, dominance, and restoration gives you an extra 3% vit for 12 seconds, and that's at 160. Okay, so you just saw the claw at 160. The claw one at 200 stays largely the same. Everything stays the same in terms of uh, the group weapon buff getting 3% vit per cast member, the stronger pot because you lose instant power ability, uh, the 7% might restoration and dominance, but 200 it grants you a new additional proc uh, to group buff yourself and the rest of the group. You get a 5% critical chance and magnitude for 12 seconds. Uh, so if I hit defibrillator, which is my um, instant power ability, Go into my effects here. So Claw, I get 3% VIT because I've cast it on myself. So that would go um, up to everyone in the group. And then I have the Defibrillator here. So 20% uh, Precision, that was already standard. Now 7% Dominant, 7% Resto, 7% Might, 5% Critical Chance, and Critical Magnitude. So it should show up in my stats as well. So if I don't have this, the stats currently aren't there. So go down to uh, the critical weapon and critical ability, 106 and 26. So let's see if that increases here. So 106 and 26, and now they go up to 111, 26.2, 111 to 39%, 27%, 8.5, 27.8.5. So each one goes up. Uh, critical power, magnitude, healing, healing magnitude, ability, attack chance. Uh, ability, ability, this is might, and weapon is weapons. Uh, so if you're a crit always critical ability stands for power. So if I hit like taser pull, then a taser pull has a higher chance to crit. Where if I'm using like flurry shot or whatever weapon combo, then that would the critical weapon would impact that. So we can kind of hit defib and go back again. So that's the the impact of it there. Some of them go up by okay amounts. Some of the crits stay about the same. But uh, nonetheless, it is some nice increases. Is it necessarily worth 200? If you're already, that's the thing. 5% uh, uh, crits is still very powerful. That's that's the same as like the OMAC trinket. And then it's, fi it's not just 5% for DPS, but it's 5% for yourself for the power crits, for healings, for their crits, for DPS, precision, and might based. So it is still a very powerful proc. It's a, mil a million XP to get there, but if you are um, a very big believer in the battle troll spec, you want to be a battle troll, explore that um, play style, then yeah, 100% you're going to want the claw because uh, you want that buff. But even if you already have the claw at 160, it's still just as good. Um, yes, the 5% criticals is nice, but once again, it's not so much for maximizing your own damage. Yeah, you'll, you'll do some nice parses, which I'll show in a moment uh, what it's possibly capable of. Uh, but in the end, you're helping out the DPS and the group better. So if you're like in a, in, you're in a league and helping out your league mates and you, you only troll and don't DPS, uh, then yeah, you can help them the best by getting this to 200. Um, but there's other artifacts you should get to 200 first that'll help not only your DPS roll but your support roll as well. Like the Gemini Soul Cloak, like that's those two are better off getting 200 first and then getting the Claw eventually. So it's it's one of those things where you save it to like a double XP weekend or if you've got some extra Nth Metal laying around. But the the Claw buff is very powerful at 200. It just 
not necessarily powerful enough to warrant a million XP at the start. There's other other effects you want to get before that, but uh, it's still an artifact that you should have a 200 if you enjoy this battle troll playstyle. So let's get into the actual parses and the impact of it now. Okay, that just gives you like a roof example, 21, 25, 20, whatever. Uh, that's at lower stats and obviously in controller gear and lower skill points, but it gives you the <clears throat> the uh, impression that, uh, and only one artifact. But the, the control buff itself, uh, you still get the 7% rest out and dominance and might, as well as you get the 5% critical chance and critical magnitude for those 12 seconds. So basically, it just means that you can do the battle troll uh, load out still have the successful uh, DPS so in controller stance with you know limited gear and everything you know the 25k parser is still acceptable in single target still extra damage you can be doing as a controller and if you had proper artifacts proper spec you could even push that even higher closer to the 30s especially in this new DLC gear uh, so a battle troll the claw is what makes the battle troll build uh, viable uh, without the claw, there's no point in even trying for a battle troll. You can also run the Gemini on top of that in a battle troll build, because then you'd get the Pollux Gaze proc, you'd get the uh, <clears throat> so run like Soul Cloak, uh, Gemini, and um, obviously the claw there, and have that synergy with the battle troll build, and then be kind of build on top of that. But uh, it just it's one of the things that makes it viable, as well as helping everyone else. Uh, so basically, you're doing damage your, uh, yourself, as well as you're buffing the entire group. Not only you're buffing, the, like helping the DPS and the tanks by helping the restoration and dominance, you're helping healers. Now you're helping uh, the DPS even better with a critical chance and magnitude for the 12 seconds. So all around, it, it just uh, it just depends on your play style as a controller. If you want to be a pure controller, or you want to go for more of a battle spec. So if you want to go for battle spec, 100%, you're going to want to get this to 200. If you're not too concerned with like a battle troll concept or build, then don't worry about the claw getting it to 200. Even even at 160, is still acceptable because you still get the 7% buff. You, the only difference is you don't get the 5% the critical chance. That's the only difference between 160 and 200. So you can still do a good job as a battle troll with it being 160, but for the million XP, you get uh, a 5% critical chance and magnitude for the for yourself and the entire group as well, so it just depends on your playstyle. And in terms of Grapple Soul Cloak, this kind of fits under every role, healer, tank, troller, whatever. Uh, so we'll test this as well for the healing aspect of it. So at 160, uh, each increases your maximum supercharge by 27%, and reduces your cooldown ability by 22.5%, and that's at uh, 160. Okay, so you already saw what the Soul Cloak was at 160, and I've already covered this at uh, my healer video as well, if you've seen that, or it's linked below. But the Soul Cloak at rank 200, uh, besides the you know base and innate stat increase, uh, the only additional proc, the Supercharger Regeneration stays the same, and the cooldown at 27 and 22.5, that doesn't change. The only thing now is we have Restore 7% Maximum Supercharge after using a Supercharge ability. Uh, this does not stack with the Extended Supercharge Tactical mod. That was the chest mod that gave you an extra 5%. I never run that as a controller. I never recommend to run that as a controller. I always recommend power efficiency. So Supercharge use, Superpowers use 5% less power. That's more effective as a controller in my type of rotation. Uh, so just to give you an idea here, I'm not running the head mod for battle display. Uh, no, I don't even have it. Um, not running, obviously, extended supercharge. So basically, the supercharge you see me getting back from battle display is that 7%. So if I use uh, battle, battle display here, or battle drone, is that battle display? Yeah, battle drone. 
as you can see that little kickback there that was the the seven percent so it's one of those things where the soul cloak is the most important artifact for a controller that supercharger generation the cooldown on the supercharge you know it, and the seven percent supercharge is icing on the cake uh it would be nice if some of the other stuff changed but that would probably make it op but uh it's an artifact that helps your dps side for might or for precision helps your if you switch to a tank or healer it helps out uh so it's it's along with the eye of the gemini this whole cloak is definitely an artifact you need to get at 200 right away because it helps multiple roles helps multiple power sets uh, it's it's going to be beneficial no matter what, and it just fits perfectly with the synergy of the controller role with generating supercharge with my, with that rotation, with the three debuff rotation, and uh, using everything else. So it's just an artifact you want to get to 200 right away, along with the Gemini, because it's very helpful and very powerful.